Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. The Natural Health Podcast is perfect for high-performing, business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve optimal health. It's Wednesday, which means it's time for What Would I Do? In today's episode of the Natural Health Podcast, we discuss this week's question, All questions are kept confidential. I read them and answer them as if it was me. Hence why it's called, what would I do? The information provided is not to be taken as advice and is solely for information purposes only. I am not here to cure, treat, or provide medical advice. I'm here to educate and inform you so you're able to take steps towards optimal health. Please discuss any medical issues or healthcare changes or lifestyle changes with your healthcare professional. Let's get into today's question. Thank you for joining me. And today's question is such an interesting one. It is all about hysterectomy. So the question is, I would love to know what things I can do to help support my recovery and healing from hysterectomy. Please note I have kept one ovary, but everything else is gone. Okay, so let's get into that today's question. But before we start, I want to give you an understanding of what a hysterectomy is. Just in case you're unsure what a hysterectomy is, I wanted to inform you. Okay, so a hysterectomy is a surgical procedure to remove a woman's uterus. So essentially the uterus, also known as the womb, is where the baby grows when a woman is pregnant. The uterine lining is the source of the menstrual bleeding also. So the extent of a hysterectomy varies depending on the reasons for the surgery. In most cases, the entire uterus is removed. So what happens is the doctor may also remove the ovaries and the fallopian trues during the process. The ovaries are the organs that produce estrogen and other hormones, and the fallopian tubes are the structures that transport the egg from the ovaries to the uterus, just to give you a bit of an understanding right so usually once someone has has a hysterectomy they will stop having a menstrual period and also be unable to become pregnant so there are a number of different hysterectomies like i mentioned sometimes they remove everything sometimes they keep things in this situation they removed all of it except one ovary so why would someone get a hysterectomy there are a number of reasons i'm unsure why this individual has had a hysterectomy but some of the reasons why someone would have a hysterectomy is because of chronic pelvic pain uncontrollable vaginal bleeding cancer of the uterus cervix or ovaries some fibroids um, uterine prolapses endometriosis a pelvic inflammatory disease and so forth these are some of the reasons why someone might have a hysterectomy so it can be a hysterectomy can actually be pro, um, help done in a number of ways but most methods require an anesthetic either a general or local anesthetic and what happens is it puts you to sleep throughout the procedure so they don't feel any pain so the type of anesthetic will sometimes be combined with sedatives which will help you feel sleepy and relaxed during the procedure so i'm unsure if you had a local or a general anesthetic i'm consuming i'm assuming a general anesthetic right so while some women don't have health issues during or after the surgery, there are some common risks associated with the procedure itself, which may include injury to nearby organs, anesthesia complications, blood clots in the legs or lungs, infections, heavy bleeding, weight gain, early menopause, um, this is mainly when the ovaries have been removed, pain during sexual intercourse, incontinence, which is you know, not the nicest thing because most people have ha, do have a hysterectomy because they want to remove the pain that they're in and then they have it and actually get more pain or more issues with it. So I'm hoping that this individual who wrote in isn't in that case. So the question is, is what? how can they recover from a hysterectomy? And this is exactly what I'm going to be talking about now. But before I get into it, there's a number of questions that I would ask myself if I was in this situation. And the questions that I would ask myself is, is your ovary producing enough hormones? Because I know there's one. Um, so is my ovary producing enough hormones as I have one? Am I still producing enough hormones until I go to menopause? Or is my menopause becoming early? Because if I'm going through menopause early, this may change the treatment plan and it may it definitely needs a whole different approach of looking at a hysterectomy. Because there's the hysterectomy itself and there's the condition of going into early menopause. 
So what I'm talking about today is just the hysterectomy. I'm not going to touch upon going into early menopause. I may do an actual podcast on this um, great topic to talk about, but today is just about the hysterectomy, right? The other thing that I would ask myself is, am I stressed? How stressed am I? What is happening currently in my life? But also, why was the original reasons why I had a hysterectomy? Has that gone better? Has that gone worse? Okay. Then also it was, I would ensure that my healthcare provider is getting me testing done to ensure that I look at my hormone status at the moment after my hysterectomy. What is my estrogen like? What is my progesterone like? What is my testosterone like? What is my cortisol level like? Are my organs functioning well? Do I have an infection after the hysterectomy? Has there been any complications? Um, am I? How's my incontinence going? Am I able to go toilet, bathroom properly? Am I having um, pain after sexual intercourse and so forth? These are the questions that I would ponder but ask myself um, after I've had a hysterectomy, what would I do? Okay, the number one thing that I would do after I've had a hysterectomy, if I've had one, is I would look at the first thing is I went under an anesthetic, a local or a general anesthetic. This can cause huge this does cause huge disturbances in our body. Okay. So the number one thing that I want to look at is what can I do in regards to that? So the number one is you probably did use antibiotics. They probably put antibiotics in you, right? Um, this, and what we need to do now is I would address the alteration of the microbiota and support the gut. And including this, I would use SB. I would also use a strain specific probiotic for the gut micro restoration and support okay and then what i would also look at is my pain and inflammation that is happening after the hysterectomy what is my pain like what is my inflammation like i would utilize anti-inflammatory herbs such as please note keep please touch base with a naturopath or your healthcare professional before using these herbs this is just something that i would do so it'd be turmeric boswellia willow bark ginger and quercetin these would help with the inflammation and the pain I would also look at my immunity because my immune system would have been suppressed during the procedure or it would have been elevated, depends on what's happening. I would look at such things as zinc and vitamin C, foods and supplements if necessary. The one thing that I would 100% look at is my liver support. Liver support is key, key, key because I have been you know, drugs have been through, put through my body and I want to support my liver to remove these because they're no longer needed within my body. And that would include phytonutrients for detoxification. I'm using herbs such as um, milk thistle, cisandro, turmeric, green tea, pomegranate, broccoli, and so forth. The other thing that I would ensure is also that my gut is on point, that I'm ensuring that I'm bowel, I'm having a regular bowel movement every single day and it is all good. If not, I would ensure I would get support um, from to make sure my bowels moving such as partially hydrolyzed guar gum supports that so in regards to herbs i need to look at accelerating the healing pro, uh, protect collagen and elasticin and prevent deep vein thrombosis that may be happening and this grapeseed extract is absolutely brilliant for that in addition to that i want to promote growth of new conductive tissue and also externally and internally so go to cola is absolutely brilliant for that in addition to that i want to help detox from the anesthesia protect liver from toxins milk thistle like i spoke about if i have any nausea 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 <laughs> after the procedure i will look at ginger i would also look at strengthening uh, my tissues using high silica for strengthening tissue repair such as horse tail the other thing that i would also do is i would follow doctor instructions to avoid performing certain activities as a recovery time such as bending lifting sexual intercourse and so forth i want to organize after i've had the procedure i want to organize minimal duties i want to ensure that i get a cleaner to come in or a mate or family member to help me out that i'm not stressed out i would get someone to cook for me or get meals prepared or have them frozen um, before the procedure so i'm not worried about that i would take time off so i'm not stressed about that to ensure that they know what is happening i would ensure that i'm not wearing tight clothing i don't want anything um, pushing against the abdominal area below the abdominal area i don't want anything like that i want to be wearing breathable cotton fabric also um, also what i want to do is maybe look at a belly binders i'll touch base with my doctor to see if this is something that is suitable for myself like I said, I will look at pain relief, either that's pharmaceutical or natural. That's something that needs to be spoken about with a healthcare professional. But because these painkillers may cause constipation, it is important, vital to ensure that I'm eliminating every single day. 
diet, what would a diet look like? My diet would be filled with vegetables, mainly soups to ensure ease of digestion because my body's repairing. Soups, ease of digestion, easily digestible foods. Um, you know, don't look at having dairy, um, gluten, any of those irritable foods in my diet. Keep it as clean as possible, as whole food as possible. The key, key, key is also what I would show is that I'm sleeping on point. My circadian rhythm needs to be high circadian, high cortisol in the morning and drop down at night. I need to be awake in the morning and asleep at night. If this isn't an issue, this is something that needs to be worked on. I will touch base with a local acupuncturist to ensure that they assist me with my healing process. What I would also look into is getting high protein vegetables and really good fats in my diet. So work with someone to get a diet on point and also the scar tissue that we spoke about. So there's hopes that I've spoken about can assist with that, but also healing from the inside out, um, such as looking at um, coconut oil or pure vitamin E cream with some mixture of essential oils to put over the scar. Of course, once it's healed, we don't want to put an infection in there or anything. So that's something to look at. So these are the things that I would look at after immediately after I've had a hysterectomy. It is key to touch base with a healthcare professional after you've had your hysterectomy. Ideally, it would have been key to touch base with someone before your hysterectomy to prepare you for the hysterectomy. However, it is as beneficial as just looking after yourself after it. So have it, uh, looking after yourself after hysterectomy is absolutely key. Like I said, I just touched base on the hysterectomy part now. If the menopause does become an issue, that is something that we need to look at separately. Thank you so much. I've run out of my time. I hope I shed some light onto this question or anyone listening who may have this issue in the future. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at mahela.raguz on Instagram and I will be in touch with you and hopefully be able to answer your question via the Natural Health Podcast. Remember, you are not alone in the journey of optimal health. I'm here to assist you and make this journey a pleasant one. Until next Wednesday, love you. 